over 1,200 right. turtles stranded. If this is an annual thing, something's going on. Why see turtles strand, Cape Cod edition. Hey everybody, welcome back. We are here trying to figure out why turtles strand on this beach. This is Cape Cod, and I know turtles strand for a lot of different reasons, but here they're coming in by the hundreds every year, and we're here to figure out why. In particular, we're going to the beach where Munchkin stranded. Quick refresher, she is the huge loggerhead that we saw at the Turtle Hospital last episode, but she really only made it because volunteers found her here on this beach and saved her. This place is crazy. I mean, all the trees are little tiny munchkin trees. <laughs> I just thought of that. I just thought of that. I did, I did. Let me give you a quick reminder of where this is. You see that little hook right there? That's Cape Cod. And if we zoom in a little bit more into the end, that hook right there, that is Wellfleet, and that's where we are. And from above, it looks a little bit like this. So this is where Munchkin was found, just over those dunes. They have a legion of volunteers who will walk these beaches on all of the cold days in the winter when the wind's just gusting and blowing. And they don't just come in the day, they come at night too. It's, it's quite an effort. Now to help me figure this turtle stranding thing out, Jonas and I are here with the ranger that helped her, the members of the Wellfleet Bay Cold Stun Sea Turtle staff, and of course the volunteers who helped find her. Good. Now we can do the interview, now we can right? Do that. All right. Oh my God. Okay. The one who started it all. Thank you, my pleasure. Really Thanks for telling the story. That's yeah, good. and the sea turtle researcher. It's oh, a big turtle. It's isn't a really it? big turtle. <laughs> they all strand on the yeah. outside. Yeah. So I'm slowly piecing it together. Turtles are not supposed to be on the beach. They're not nesting here. They're up here to eat, and all of their food is in the water. So turtles that show up on the beach here are are sick or injured or disoriented. Turns out they get a lot of strandings of various types all year, but the majority are during the fall when the water temperature quickly drops. Basically when the temperatures drop, this environment is just right, right at the edge of their thermal tolerance. We'll be seeing these cold stun turtles washing up on the beach, know they're in trouble. This gets to a simple answer, they're cold. They call them cold stunned, we might know this as hypothermia. But here's where it gets tricky. It gets cold in other parts of their range in the fall and winter, but they don't have strandings in these numbers quite like this. And it seems like the problem might really be related to the geography. So the Cape is really a giant trap. The hook of the Cape is a trap. It extends seaward 30 miles, and then it extends north 30 miles. And then there's two traps, Wellfleet Harbor and Provincetown Harbor. So as these turtles sort of follow the coast, they don't know how to get over the sandbars back into the deeper one. They have to go all the way back around. But every extra day, half day that they spend, they're just slowing down and they just can't find their way out. We also know these turtles are already rare and threatened. When you have a critically endangered species, um, the idea is that every animal counts. And I guess it seemed to me that this is not something that's new. I mean, the Cape has been here for a long time. Cape Cod itself is only 20,000 years old, give or take, geologically. Sea turtles are ancient species, um, upwards of 200 million years old and have evolved very little, very slowly. So no, they haven't learned to go around. Let's recap what we know so far. A lot of turtles strand, it's because they get cold and wash up on beaches. And we think it's because they can't figure out how to go around the Cape. And even though the Cape's really old and this is such a natural process, we're helping because they're critically endangered and we have to do something. You're just not gonna walk away from it. I, I, I don't know that I'd wanna know a person that would walk away from something that's injured or struggling. You know, if you think it's alive, you've gotta do something. And this gets to the organized walkers that Bob first put together some 40 years ago in 1979, a way to walk the beach, find the turtles before they die. And that's exactly what happened to these two the day before Thanksgiving. We know what the rocks look like, the boulders, because we walk it so much. That's not the usual boulders we see, you know, because I couldn't see its head. The surf was breaking over its head. I stopped and did a double take, walked back, and fortunately the wave receded at that time and I saw its head. I said, no, you gotta come down here. You wouldn't believe this loggerhead. <laughs> That was the start of the process from the Mass Audubon cruise through everyone to the New England Aquarium that ended up saving Munchkin. But here's what I find so unusual. Most cold stuns are Kemp's Ridley turtles. They're juveniles like this, but this was a massive loggerhead, a huge adult. We still don't know why Munchkin couldn't find her way out or ultimately what was going on before the stranding. And that's part of the research that the New England Aquarium and their partners are working on. 
Munchkin will get a satellite tag and we will ultimately try to answer some bigger questions. We have no idea what they've been doing prior to stranding. It's just a big mystery and something that we're hoping to actually start peeling away some of the mysteries of that in the coming years. If you think about it, this beach right here could have been the end of Munchkin's journey. But now it's a little bit like the beginning of her journey back to the sea. Uh, in fact, you're going to be following along, I hope, in the next couple weeks as we prepare to release her back here into the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, next week, we're going to the rehab facility, the Turtle Hospital, which is going to be kind of cool. Follow along on the New England Aquarium social sites. Uh, myself and Jonas are also updating our social sites with a little behind the scenes bits. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.